also they did it multiple times. So like it all happened, like they run out, everyone boos them. And then they were like, okay, let's do it again. Like they need to do another take. They did it three times. I believe they kept going back in the tunnel and running out and we kept booing them. And then I was like, Kirby told us to be loud. We're getting tired. Like we're booing so much at halftime. We're getting worn out. Kirby's going to be upset. <laughs> Welcome to my God, a podcast. I'm Jim Wood. In this episode, John Powell and I review Georgia's 41-31 win over Mississippi State. We talk about our experiences on Saturday and what stood out to us during the game. As always, remember to check out the newly redesigned MyGottaPodcast.com to see our latest merch. And you can follow us on social media at MyGottaPodcast. Finally, if you need help with your website or your online presence, head over to WorkingWebMedia.com slash dogs. Now, let's join the conversation in progress. We're back. We're back just as we predicted. Just as we predicted. <laughs> uh, I don't know that this team is ever going to cover the spread. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I did. I picked Georgia's score right. I just, uh, I got Mississippi State's wrong. So that's my my claim to fame on this game. I did have a, I had 41 to 10. You had 43 to 14. 41 to 31. Um, yeah. 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 I mean, it, it's just, uh, I think, uh, you, you shared a, uh, you shared a post by, uh, what Cole, Cole Kubelik or whatever. Mm, yeah. Um, where it was basically talking about like, you know, take the win and move on basically. Like, yeah. Yeah. I feel like, I feel like every UGA fan needs to accept and absorb, uh, we won an SEC game at home. Uh, against a an opponent that uh, that counts in the rankings. That's all that we really need to uh, worry about. Doesn't matter where they're ranked. Doesn't matter any of these other things. Like there were signs of there were signs that the coaching staff are making some of the changes that we've been looking for and that we've been calling for. Yep. There are signs that um, some of the players that we've wanted to step up are stepping up. Yep. Um, there are definitely signs that there are flaws, you know, I think that, um, <laughs> Tony, Tony Waller from waiting since last Saturday kind of put it best. Like this is a good, this is a good team. It's not a great team. Um, I think yeah. at this point, at this point, six games into the season, we should all pretty much get used to that. This is how it's going to go. Um, we're going to, uh, I, like this game never felt like it was in doubt, man. I mean, no, it it wasn't, and I haven't looked back at the. I'm I'm sure the win probability shows that. Like ESPN, I guess I would assume felt the same way. Um, what I said when it, to, was, when it was three to three, it was a ninety two percent win probability. Yeah, yeah. I mean that, that was first, the lowest it ever got. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I what I what I said to our crew uh, walking out of the stadium was the the only thing that's been consistent about this Georgia team is inconsistency. So that's kind of how I feel right now. Like we've seen great things. We've seen bad things. So I, I think that that tracks to me. Like, you know, you're either elite or you're not, as Kirby said, I would say right now, this team is an elite, but I'm not sure there's an elite team in college football. I guess we may find out uh, next weekend, but we're not here to talk about that just yet. Yeah. I don't think that, uh, I don't think that anybody's elite right now. Um, yeah. Yeah. you're either, <laughs> what I would say is you're either elite or you haven't played anybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah that's fair that's fair uh all right well i I, me- I mentioned to my crew we did um yeah we 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 made it down to athens again um kim and lily and i did a we it was very it was different in that because we drove down the day of you know so we did drive down saturday morning um so long drive in but thankful to be able to just stop in at my parents house drop the dogs off and we pretty much you know headed in um to the game. Uh, we were still able to hit the tailgates. Apologies uh, to Hug Dog. Uh, we did not make it <laughs> by Hug Dog because we got uh, so caught up watching the Bama game um, at Morris Hall that we just <laughs> we watched the whole end of that game and then we went to the game. Um, but uh, <laughs> it, was, it, it was a good time, though. Um, Kim's middle school continues uh, to represent. Um, she had another uh, friend who was in town. She came by Morris Hall. Uh, so that was fun. Um, saw Daniel from Locked On, uh, in Speakeasy Sports. He was in town with his son. 
uh got to hang out with them at morris hall so that was a lot of fun and then uh coach hayes came with coach hayes was hit was there tailgated and then he sat with us um so that was also that was also a good time um and he got to meet the bobo hater that sits uh relatively near us and that was pretty funny <laughs> or he got, to, craig? he got to it wasn't <laughs> craig it was not craig um <laughs> i guess he didn't so much meet him as he he got to ex, uh get the experience so Bobo he got the full the full wood clan experience <laughs> although i will tell you what i will tell you what we were well behaved <laughs> we were well behaved there was no uh no 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 conversations about it or anything just kind of like eye rolling and such so that's funny yeah yeah but yeah man it was a beautiful day uh it it was one of those days where like um I mean, I know you know this, like just the way the weather was in Georgia on Saturday it was like chilly in the morning. And so I was like, do I wear pants? Do I wear shorts? Um, and so ultimately I just followed my dad's lead and my dad wore shorts. And so I, I was wearing shorts, but I was so cold. I was like, I brought pants cause I started panicking. Um, so I had a change, but I did, I, I stayed, stayed true to, uh, what I posted in my Friday fit pick. <laughs> once you get, once you get a few bourbons in you. I think that you can tolerate just about any, any temperature. Yeah. And it wasn't <laughs> cold at all. And I guess I kept being like, what about like Kentucky swirling winds? But that was like a late game. So it didn't matter. It was fine. I no, dude, yeah. this past weekend was brutal. Like I, I remember like, um, so you guys, <clears throat> so you guys did, the, um, you guys did the, the, the football thing and we did, um, all of the other things, <laughs> all yeah. the other sports. Um, and it was, it was hot. It was, it was definitely, it was definitely warm. Yeah. It got by, you know, by kickoff, it was, it was pretty hot. So definitely was glad I did. I stuck with the shorts. So, uh, my dad talked some sense into me. Yeah. I can, I, I definitely experienced the, the, chi- the early morning chilliness, uh, the next morning. Cause I had mm-hmm. to be, I had, we had to be in uh Woodstock at 7am the next day. So, um, yeah, uh, it it was definitely chilly. <laughs> we were walking around; you can actually like see your breath and stuff. I was like, "Oh, yeah, that means that it's about to get cold." <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I don't know. Baseball pullover weather is probably around the corner. A little little nice quarter zip. Uh, we're we're getting closer to that, just not quite there yet. Yeah, we had the, we had the first fire on the on the neighborhood street here mm. recently here this weekend too. Saturday night, I went over to my buddy Kyle's, and uh, we we were partaking in uh, in some of the bourbons. Nice, nice. Yeah, we had the bourbons Friday night uh, at my buddy's uh, birthday party, so it was a good time. Good time. Everything worked out. Yeah. We had a good weekend. Yeah, yeah. I smoked a pork pork wine. Um, first time I'd ever done that, which uh, which, which turned out nice. Sweet. Yeah, those are good. They're not too hard to do either. Yeah, a couple hours. Yeah, yeah. I was actually surprised at how quickly it cooked. Yeah, much much quicker than a shoulder, so or a muscle, yeah, but yeah, way faster. Yeah, nice. That's awesome. Um, I gotta say, I, something I had I had meant to. I can't remember if I texted you this or not, but uh, I know how much you love like watching um film studies and film reviews. You you would eat up sitting next to Coach A's in the stadium in our seats. I, I, I'm, I'm like super bummed that I've missed him <laughs> like two weeks in a row now. Oh like, man. It, it was amazing. It, it was, it was like having coach Hayes huddle. Uh, I mean it was, but it was like being in the episode with him. It was amazing. Like first play, like we lined up and he was like, all right, we're in chips. Lucky. I was like, this is incredible. <laughs> <laughs> oh. It's pretty funny. So I would, had, I would have probably, I would have probably been asking him a bunch of questions. Oh, I totally did. I totally <laughs> did. We had great conversation. Like there was one point where he said something. I was, ex- I was like, explain that to me, and he did, and it was like, oh god, oh, this is so great. So we, we had a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun. It was a good day, man. Good times. Good times. Coach A seems, it seems, it seems like good people. He is. He is for sure. Um, fifty-one to seven GATA stop by. Uh, he got, got introduced them. That was good. Uh, glad. He, uh, he is doing well. I know he, he wasn't able to make it up to the last game after uh, hurricane impacts. Um, and then uh, Coach Trill Bill. Was I was going to say, did you get a double coach? Got double, double coach effect. Did got that going. <laughs> uh, C- coach Coach Trill uh, brought his girlfriend, uh, so got to meet her um, at the tailgate and at the game as well. So 
overall great day great day a lot of fun coach coach looks good in the polo he busted out the the, the fancy he busted he out the fancy outfit for the date night he did <laughs> he did that's right that's right uh epic epic was he was he barking at small children i didn't see any of that he was on good behavior he was on good behavior he was definitely on good behavior oh man well actually you know what a hilarious thing uh B Dizzle came up to me at the tailgate. He's like, Jim, I didn't realize Lou was your dad. I was like, what? <laughs> it was so funny. I think he's, I think he's, he must have, he must have been messing with you. <laughs> oh, it was so good. It was so good. He's like, someone said that. And then I looked at him and then looked at you and I was like, oh, yeah. How did I not know that? Uh, it was too in his defense, in his defense, he has a lot of, uh, he has a lot of, uh, a lot of beers. <laughs> well, and he's also got all the parental jokes going on on his side, on the Twitter side. So understandable. He does. Yeah. All right, I guess we could talk about this game. I haven't gotten I haven't gotten to a game yet. Um uh, I'm definitely I'm definitely Jones in for it. Although we're not gonna be when's when's the next home game in November or something? You mean you well, I mean you haven't made it to a conference game. You made it to a game. That's true. I did go to the Tennessee Tech. Um but yeah, yeah I man. I haven't made, it, haven't made it to the conference game yet. That was a wild thing when we were when we were leaving the PA announcer. Uh he's like, Seaver went back in five weeks. I was like, Oh my gosh, like when you say it that way, we say it that way. There are schedule is so weird, um, but yeah. Okay. It's not not only is it weird, it's it's historic. Yeah, it's yeah, it's 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 first absolutely brutal. Ever. Absolutely brutal. <laughs> yeah, first time ever that we've played the a, 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 what top five team has played. Like how many different op- opponents in the top five on the road? Yeah. I saw some I saw some kind of crazy stat about that this 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 evening that gotcha. people were that people were tweeting about. Gotcha. Yeah, I don't even know what it is exactly, but I do know it's I, I saw it too. It was it was brutal. But yeah, man, having a five week stretch where you're not at home in the middle of the season is crazy to me. But Yeah, especially on like the best the best weather. <laughs> The best weather period. You're like, yeah, you're seriously. Skip fall, and by the time we get back home, it's going to be cold. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Exactly. Yeah, that's things. All right. Uh, what? Um, so I, um, you know, we're, was mainly, I, I haven't totally fully rewatched the game, but I, although I've rewatched most of it, um, I guess, I, I don't know. I, And I've had some back and forth with this with some folks like this was not the game to get mad at Bobo about. I'll say that it was like for the, you know, for a guy behind me and other people, um, Carson Beck, you know, like he threw for the third most yards passing in a single game in Georgia history. Um, so pretty impressive, uh, day for him and the offense could have done without the second pick for sure. Um, the first pick, I think kind of fluky, tip drill kind of situation, um, which definitely kind of took the sales, took a little bit of the energy out of the building. I believe everybody got loud again. Um, but overall, I thought, you know, good day for the offense, 41 points. Yeah, I mean, the offense stepped up. I mean, Carson Beck had, what, 500 and something yards of offense and had had, had some pretty, pretty big, big drops that uh, – contributed to his uh second leading <laughs> second leading most yards lost due to drops in yeah. FBS. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean that 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 is definitely a metric that I would prefer to not be high up on the on the rankings on for sure. I mean he's lost 197 yards on drops against FBS opponents too. Against right. FBS opponents, yeah. yeah. Which I guess what is that like four games? Um, four, four or five games out of the six. It would be five. Yeah, five of the six. Ten, I think Tennessee Tech was the only non-FBS. I mean, it's like what, like 30, 40 yards per game, basically? I was told there would be no math, but that sounds right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Anyway, that's that's another tweet that I've seen making the rounds, too. Um, and it And it definitely tracks. Like, holy cow. Yeah. I think the one, the the one, the one that everybody talks about, like you know, Arian Smith, like, oh man, he, why did he, 
I, I think that Coach Hayes, you know, posted one of his little analysis is that analyses uh, where he's basically said he was like lip reading Kirk, Kirby, where it was like, you know, why did he break open so deep? Yeah, I saw that. Um, and instead of instead of catching the ball, like he, you know, was reaching at his knees kind of thing. Um, that was that was probably among those, uh, you know, on, on some of the other Arian Smith drops from from deep balls. But like the biggest one was the Dominic Lovett drop where, you know, Coach Hayes put like side by side, like these are the same plays that um Monken was calling. Hmm. And it was like, this is the play when Monken had it and like how it how it transpired. And then he showed the game from Mississippi State, and it was like some of the same plays. And you could see one of the plays that we had was I think I think it was like a SEC championship play or something like that, where you know, we basically ran. Uh, I don't know what the play is called, like a tunnel screen or something like that. Um, but anyway, like we threw it outside and the wide receiver cut inside and and ran in. Um, Dominic Lovett, first of all, drops the ball on one and then takes the wrong route on another one. And if he cut inside, it would have been a much bigger gain, possibly a touchdown. And we've seen that like transpire the entirety of the season, whether it be drops, someone's running the wrong route, um if someone did this then it would have been that you know that kind of thing has been going on all season long and like i guess that you know i'll, I'll play devil's advocate on the on the bobo hater you know situation mm-hmm. the bobo the bobo brigade which is the negative term um for the bobo haters um if if you see something like that that's transpiring at some point it can't just always be on the players. Mm. Like if everybody's doing it, cause it's not just Arian and it's not just Dom. Like yeah. at some point it's gotta be on some of the coaching. Like, so I, I don't know, man, like a lot of drops, a lot of stuff's going on. We've changed. We've turned over staff. I think you've, you've touched on it privately with me. Like, yeah. You're 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 starting to get concerned with the, the the staff that we've replaced is not as 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 deep as as in the past. Uh, maybe we've we swapped some five stars for some four stars kind of thing in the in, uh, the, in the coaching realm. In the coaching right. world, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Anyway, um, I, I I don't know. Like the inconsistencies, the one consistency is that we're inconsistent. Like, yeah, that's that's getting tiresome. It is getting frustrating. I think it also speaks to how spoiled we are as a fan base that <laughs> gotten to this point where it's like, Oh yeah, here we go. First and 10 from the 20. All right. Let's 80 yards, 80 yards down the field. We're going to march every single time. Like it just doesn't always work that way, but um, that's kind of what we've grown to expect. Um, although I think that there's probably an argument to, to be made based on everything that we've seen thus far that we should probably just go for it on fourth down every time now. Oh my gosh. Yeah. We've, we're, well, we're like 90% going <laughs> for <and> fourth down. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Um, uh, all I got to say is we, we've been wanting Anthony Evans in the game. He's the leading rusher. Um, yeah. <laughs> we wanted Lawson Luggy in the game. He was targeted a bunch. Um, London Humphreys, I think, has been targeted five times this season, and he's caught four passes. Yeah, probably probably should figure out a way to get that kid the ball. Um, let's see what else. Um, we saw. I see, Anthony, well, I was going to say oh, that we saw we saw Ellis Robinson get in on the defensive side too. That was another thing. Like, yeah, maybe maybe we should play some of these young kids that are like otherworldly talents that were highly recruited. Yeah. I mean, I, so I, I hate um, I, something that Jeff Dancer pointed out, like that Branson Robinson is, he's from Mississippi. He's from Mississippi. Uh, so him getting to score a touchdown against, you know, a home state team was, I'm sure it was cool for him. Um, and then, you know, when he went down, it, it didn't look good when it happened. I had a bad mm-hmm. feeling. Um, so hopefully he's okay. I, I haven't heard much of an update coming out of that, but um you know, so that, I mean, other than that, you know, injury negative, I, I definitely saw a ton of positives. Um, I think the other thing too, and I know, I know you and, and Stacey Searles are, 
you know, have a rocky relationship, but I will say that pass protection was excellent this game overall. I felt like Carson Beck had like all day to throw, um, you know, multiple times where he was able to just kind of dance around in the pocket. Um, you know, he had to move around a little bit, but still had all day, um, you know, led to the nice touchdown to Dylan Bell was on a scramble, um, there, you know, where he was able to just keep things moving. Um, there was another one where he did something similar and I think it was close to being a touchdown to Arian Smith would have been a great catch. We dove and he ultimately dropped in the end zone. That would have been a heck of a catch. But, um, so there was the, the touchdown to, uh, bell. I was, I felt like that was, it was great footwork by bell, um, getting like the toe in and then picking his foot up. Cause like, I'm not sure exactly how close he was in line, but I, I recently saw a catch where it's like, you get your toe in, but then your heel touches, you know, all in one step. And if your heel comes down out of bounds, like that's not a catch. Like if you, know, if you go toe heel, you're out kind of thing. So, but he like got his toe in and then picked his foot up, which was awesome. So that uh, was sweet, sweet touchdown catch by Dylan Bell. Yeah, I, I agreed. Um, I think it's safe to say that he's making himself, um, he's making himself a candidate for the unofficially official. Agreed. Agreed. Hmm. We may have to discuss this. In the Texas preview. <laughs> I'm doing my Brock, Brock Bowers chin stroke here. I believe that there were some questions that might be good segues into it. Okay. Okay. Nice. Um, how about, how about the touchdown that Arian Smith had when the guy like just didn't tackle him? That was wild. Dude, that was weird, man. <laughs> like even, even the guy's other teammates were like, what the hell? Like, <laughs> so I, he had to have thought like, he had to have got lost in, you know, like lost where he was in the field. He must like, the only thing I can come <laughs> up with is that he thought the five yard line was the goal line. That's the only yeah. thing I can come up with. Cause it didn't make any sense. But yeah, the safety yeah. was like, what are you doing? <laughs> like hands up in the air. Uh, yeah, that was crazy. I imagine that that young man is probably running a lot of stadiums this week. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that was brutal. I don't know. Uh, I also thought, um, the ETN, the last touchdown, like that was right in front of us. And like, I thought he got stuffed. I was like, ah, and like, I yelled like, ah, they stuffed it. <laughs> I think everybody, I think everybody thought he got stuffed. Cause I was definitely in that vein too. Cause, um, yeah. 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 But you know, the Bush push is no longer illegal. So it's kind of carried. I, I, I will say that, uh, for all the positives, there were definitely still some like negatives that are just. I, I I guess it's kind of part and parcel with what's going on with this offense. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we've, we've made the comments that so, you know, as Carson Beck goes, so does the Georgia offense. Um, the interception that he threw on the goal line yeah. was probably one of the most frustrating passes I think I've ever seen him throw. Um, yeah. Which is kind of saying something considering the <laughs> Alabama game. Um, right. He gets into he gets into the like I guess that like I mean prior to the Bama game I think he hadn't thrown an interception right yeah yeah we had like no turnovers I think on the so season since, going to that game so since that's happened which I guess you know we're running into the meat of the season right now or whatever but like since that's happened like I feel like he is forcing throws that he doesn't normally do mm. um. I don't I don't know what it is. Maybe it's lack of confidence. Maybe it's lack of confidence in the receivers. Um, I will say that I think that in that particular play was another example of I can't say because I don't know that anybody's asked him, asked Kirby this or asked anybody this, but like it looked like that there was some miscommunication on that particular pass. Yeah. Yeah. The positioning, the way that he threw it, the the positioning of uh, I think it was it was lucky, right? It the, was lucky. The, yeah, he was the intended receiver. Yeah, the positioning of lucky versus what where Beck threw it to was just not. It didn't make any dang sense. It didn't make <laughs> any dang sense why you would throw it there. Yeah, unless someone messed up, and I think that it was lucky because as soon as he threw the interception and like lucky realized that it was an interception, he immediately looked to the sideline, like, did I just did I just f up? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. And Carson was kind of gesturing like hands in the air, like what just happened? So I don't know yeah. it. Yeah. If anybody can ask, if anybody can ask them, that would be, that yes. would be wonderful to know. Um, That'd be great. Th- there's just been little, there's just been little things that have happened and you know, new staff, 
whatever, however you want to phrase it. I mean, some of these mistakes should not be happening. I mean, the drops and things like that, like these are, I mean, Dominic Lovett was an all SEC wide receiver before he came to Georgia. Right. Um, Arian Smith is a fifth year senior. Um, maybe Lawson Lucky's got some youth on him, but Carson Beck is a senior Heisman level quarterback, allegedly. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. You know, you, you figure that if he's making mistakes, then that's probably not good. But I, I tend to think that that one was unlucky. But um, yeah, I mean, there, there are mistakes being made all over the field. Um, yeah, we've just, we've got to like pull it together, you know? Like if it is the other thing, like just as a team, I feel like we've yet to see a game where we've truly played like what Jeff Dancer calls complimentary football. You know, like all three phases of the game in sync, working together, like defense gets a stop that gets the ball back to the offense who scores or what, you know, it's like special teams pins them back with a punt. Then defense gets stopped. Like that. it's just like, it's like one phase is really standing out, you know, kind of thing. Like, and it's like, even like at a time, (laughs) you know, it's like, like we go through these like waves in, in the games of, of things being good and bad this team has, I mean, it has what it takes. Like I can, you can see the pieces of the puzzle there when it works, they just need to do it at a more consistent basis. Yeah. Instead of jamming that one piece that looks like it's supposed to go right there. (laughs) (laughs) To use use your, your, your puzzle. Yeah. That's good. That's good. I like it. This for sure goes right here. No, no, let's use, let's use the piece that's supposed to go there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Speaking of the three phases, like the special teams continues to be a, a bright shining spot for. Yeah. For this team. Yeah, um, for sure. The series was it before halftime? If I remember correctly, I had to. I had to. I was in the middle of trying to pick up Camden, my youngest, um, during during that stretch there, and I, it was miscommunication on timing, so I had to actually leave twice, but. Um, anyway, uh, I was listening to it on the radio. I feel like where we stormed down the field and yeah. kicked a field goal, right? Well, he we missed it. He did miss it. So um, that, that was, that was, uh, payday's first miss of the season, but it was like, it was like a 54. It was, it was huge. It was, it was a 54 huge. yard. But he, had a, he had another good one though, right? Yeah, he did. Yeah. He, yeah. Was, I mean, it was, wasn't the one that he kicked that was good. Was, was that his. Did like, it match a career long or something like that? It may have. I'm not sure. Uh, I thought that I thought that I recalled them saying that it was a. Uh, maybe that was the one that he missed. That was I think it was the miss. Yeah, he, so he missed okay. a 55. He made 45 and 32. So I know he's made a 50 yarder. He made 50 something against Clemson. I think. Yeah. And like the, it had the distance. It had the distance. He just pulled it a little bit. A little bit. He did. Um, their kicker, the the first kick they made, um, was nice. From where we were sitting, we thought it was no good. Like it looked like it was left, and then it like faded or back in. I guess it was a draw. He's a left-handed kicker, um, <laughs> so that that one looked interesting. But yeah, and and that whole sequence was close to being that whole complimentary football thing. Like you know, in a in, in a moment, right? So like you get you get the pick by KJ, KJ Bolden, you get the pick, storm down the field right before halftime. You know, go for the field goal. Uh, this close. This is so close. Um, but yeah, with you. Yeah. I mean, but it was there. I mean, it was, it was nice to see Kirby, like, you know, I guess that there were probably past in past years, that would be a situation where we would just kind of like kneel it out or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. It was we good just, to see that. We we would have, we would have just kind of been like, okay, let's just take it to halftime. Yeah. It was nice to see them execute a two minute drill that um they really seemed like that they wanted to, you know, end on. Yeah, agreed. I guess the last thing I'll say about like the Mississippi State defense is I hope number twenty one is okay. I don't know if you remember when he <laughs> it was like on our first touchdown drive, I think. Um I I this was something I did rewatch in the replay. I thought Matt, Matt Stinchcomb uh said it best that he he tried to call timeout and and injured himself. I don't know if you noticed that. So he he totally flopped to get a timeout. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. But like he he called he he like signaled for timeout and then he just flopped on the ground. And then like in the stadium they announced timeout Mississippi State. But then like they come back over and they're like no timeout they're not charged with timeout because it was an injury. It's like oh my gosh. But yeah, Matt Stinchcomb said he injured himself trying to call timeout, which I thought was a uh, very well said. 
<laughs> he pulled he pulled the muscle. Yeah, crowd didn't like that. Which yeah, I mean, it is what it is. Yeah, I, I, and yeah. Georgia Georgia's had that happen in the past too. So yeah, yeah. Um, know, it's just it's just part of the strategy of the game, the way that it the way that it's written right now. I personally, just to you know, go off on a little bit of a rant here, but <laughs> I I personally think that it's just part of the game and asking referees to decide whether or not someone is hurt or not is just ridiculous to me. But yeah, um, you know, I think that it's one of those like if it's a once in a blue moon kind of thing. You know, let it let it go. But when you're Lane Kiffin and you had, what, like, I think they had like 15 stoppages or something like that. Because yeah, it's they crazy. Had, it's out of control. Had, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm with you. Um, I to me, this game, like, what concerned me walking out of the stadium was was the defense. Um, and it was so close to being like so good. Um. You know, so getting into halftime, they scored 10 points, won, you know, the touchdown on basically a bust um, where they got down there. And then uh, we get the ball, start the second half, march right down, score a touchdown. It's 34 to 10 early in the third quarter. Stadium has the stadium, which by the way, I will say a bit of a tangent. The stadium, I would, I would say the crowd, uh, while I still don't agree with the way Kirby went about it, it did work. Um, the environment was much better. The fans were much louder than Auburn, even with less there because there was some students that never showed up. Um, but it was very loud. And I think you that played out with Mississippi State having to call timeout, false starts, delay games, all that stuff happened. Um, so, like I said, I, as I kind of figured what happened, Kirby got the result he was looking for. Um, <laughs> I will also say there were de- people were definitely mad about it. It was definitely a topic of conversation. There's there was one point where like everyone did get really loud and then like we didn't get to stop. And I heard another guy like in our section be like, Well, we were loud, Kirby, and still nothing happened or something like that. And I was like, Okay, here we go. Um, so yeah, people definitely weren't happy about it. But um at any rate, you know, that Mississippi State's first drive of the third quarter was really like the turning point of that kind of, you know, you know, like you, I agree with you, like it would never felt like it was in any kind of doubt or anything, but like we gave them life with like they, that touchdown drive that they had to answer our touchdown drive that was extended by penalty twice. So we had like, you know, third and eight or so they get a first down on a pass interference. Um, and then fast forward, it's third down, uh, stadium super loud. They get a delay game, I believe. So now it's third and even longer. Crowd's going nuts. Get a sack, but face mask. Um, I mean, Ch- Chaz Chambliss like ripped the quarterback's helmet off. Um, uh, it was kind of unlucky, I guess. Like, but he like reached back with his left hand or something and yanked it off. So again, there's been a, there's been a bunch of those 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 yeah. penalties that, that are happening where they just. Like why? Like yeah. what, what are we doing? What are yeah. we doing here? So I mean, you know, so we had gotten them out of that. They're gonna, you know, get in the ball back and we're up thirty four to ten. Instead, again we extend the drive by penalty. They end up scoring. Then the subsequent drive was what you were talking about earlier, when Beck throws the pick. Then they go eighty yards and score. And now it's like, okay, well now this is like actually a game. Like what just happened? You know, and we're it was thirty four to ten. We were sitting there in the stadium talking about how, oh my gosh, we might actually cover the spread kind of thing. And like the way the game just turned on a dime. And to me, it was turned on a dime by those drive extending penalties. Like we've got, you know, we, we're talking about the inconsistency. I mean, the penalties are killing us too. Like you've got to cut down on the penalties. Um, that's been a big down down thing for this for this team so far this year. Agreed. Um, so w- one of those time periods was uh, let's see, it was it was third and eleven. With two minutes and 47, 40 seconds left in the third quarter, it was 24 34. Even then, uh, so it was a passing completed, brought it fourth down. So even then, you know, the the problem, the win probability was 93 and a half. Yeah. 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 It never, <laughs> it never felt like a game. And, it, you know, they never got it within any closer than 10, you know, in the second half, yeah. I don't think, or maybe it was to, down to seven at some point or something. But, um, 
Yeah, it never felt close, but it was, you know, the game wasn't over. Like, we had to still do things um, where, like, it felt like we were primed to just put them away in the third quarter and kind of to get, get to what you wanted to see, which is, like, Gunnar Stockton, you know, like, all the backups coming in. And, and we never got there because, really, I, I feel like it was because of that, that turning point that Mississippi State's first drive of the third quarter really turned it for them. So, I got to give credit to their freshman quarterback, though. That kid... That kid played really well. Um, he he impressed me. So, um, you know, starting on the road, only a second start, tough environment in Georgia. Um, you played good. He had a good game. Yeah, yeah. Seemed like he was. Yeah, he had he had a good game. Um, and I think that they in the second half started kind of picking on one of our weak weak areas, which is the boundary, the boundary corners. Um, yeah, we need, we need some folks to step up there. And I think that, you know, if you're looking for silver linings on, you know, how to look at this game in the context of the rest of the season and the overall season is, you know, I think that we've started a lot of these guys and in a lot of the positions that we felt like we're going to be places to win. And, you know, just, just like what happens in, in life, you know, you on paper have a great resume and you, you know, you do you're doing the right things, but then when when push comes to shove, and and the, and the moments where you you got to get the work done, um, some people cave and some people don't. You know what I mean? And so, yeah. I think that uh, seeing Ellis Robinson out there a lot more than we have, I think seeing Anthony Evans out there more than we have, Austin Lucky out there more than we have. Yeah, targeting more, targeting those guys more. London Humphreys obviously getting into the game. Um, I think that they're kind of figuring this out. I think that um, who did they move around on the offensive line that that uh, I think Graham was talking about that they didn't he didn't see a whole lot of snaps after a certain period. Maybe it was on the defense. I can't remember, but oh, it was defense. You know, it was a defense. It was a Stackhouse. Stackhouse. We had a yes. lot of backups in on the defense. Yeah. Yeah. So. They're moving. They're moving pieces around. Um, I thought that you know, if you were if we were grading people, I haven't seen the PFF grades or anything like that. I would I would imagine that Ernest Green probably had some, you know, some struggles there because he got bull rushed into the into the backfield a few times. Um, I don't, I don't know. There's definitely like little little pieces here and there that seem like that they're indicative of what's been going on in the broader season sense. Yeah. Um, but, uh, the, the coaching staff does seem to be making adjustments. If you're looking for adjustments, like what the heck are we doing? It seems like that they are putting people in that have not had the opportunities. And I think that's a good thing. Um, it's an indication that they recognize that there's a problem and they're trying to slowly figure it out in games where it's not going to matter too much. So you'd rather be figuring it out and tr- trying things, different things out in these kind of games as opposed to an Alabama or uh, Texas. And so, yeah, I, I think it's true to an extent, but I think also some of it, their hand was forced on a couple of them that, that you've wanted to see that we're seeing now. Um, I mean, it took a suspension for us to see Anthony Evans get that many touches. And then we've got no choice with, with Nate Frazier at this point with Branson, you know, going down. Um, so, for, for whatever the reason is, those guys are going to have to be more of a focal point. And, you know, from what we've seen, it, I feel like they're ready. Like, and I feel like, like I'll say, I feel like you've been right. And it's like, can we just see what happens when we give the ball to Anthony Evans? Um, and what we saw on Saturday, I feel like it looked pretty dang good. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, the end around was beautiful. Dude, I mean, like I, I, Anthony Evans is probably the biggest enigma on this entire team. Like, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what they've been thinking, but like, dude, ever since that kid started fielding punts at the end of the season, yeah, yeah. Year, like, whoa, where was that? Like, yeah, he just there, there's just something about him that just screams, "Give me the damn ball!" Yeah, I mean, he's electric. I feel like so. Yeah. Um, forgot to talk about this. Um, I absolutely loved the play when Beck and Cash Jones shifted and Jones <laughs> became the quarterback, handed it off to Beck, 
who've then faked a reverse and then threw for a first down to Delp, I believe. Delp, Delp a brother out. That play was awesome. That was sick. Uh, and like, I, I've seen a couple of things like that happening in college football this year. I've seen some teams doing it with like, let's say, like if you have a running quarterback and then you've got, you know, like an athletic, so like a Dylan Bell, right? Like someone who played quarterback in high school and like doing things like that and having basically two quarterbacks and they shift and then they don't know what to do. Uh, but I thought that was a cool way to do that with Beck, you know, adding the reverse fake into it as well. That was a nice play. The Bobo haters, haters uh, were all up in the arms about that one. Yeah, that was, that was, that was a fun play. It's probably the right opponent to try that on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Sorry, I digress. I'm hoping I'm hoping that there are some other plays that they have up their sleeve that they've been holding on to. Um, but you know, yeah. At the end of the day, they got to catch the ball. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, it also you know, it also needs to be said that you know when you have a wide receiver that's your leading rusher, it's probably an indication that there's some other problems going on with the running game. Like, yeah. We were, we were. I know that we were texting about it earlier. That earlier today, the the questions that I've had for, you know, I I, I consider myself a data oriented person. I'm not a like let me compile the stats and just figure it out myself kind of person. I just rely on the, a lot smarter people than I am to, you know, quality check my my gut. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so I've I've been asking Josh a, a lot about. You know, dog stats. I've been asking him a lot about you know the efficiency numbers, like how are we success rate and that kind of stuff. You know, as the season has rolled through, and it seems like that we're having a pretty decent success rate. And then he sent through some numbers, and you know, I don't know if he's going to share these or not. I won't spoil it too much, but you know, he sent some trends, and I think that the one glaring item that we've we're we're kind of missing here from a an overall efficiency standpoint is the run game. Yeah. Um, everything about the numbers that statistically are out there is probably how you're feeling as a fan. They're not, they're not, they're definitely not historic like they were in 21 and 22. Um, it feels a lot more like 2017 and that data uh, bears out. So I, I hope that Josh shares it out. Cause if you look at the numbers like side by side, it seems like that we're much more, we're much more in line with where we were in 2017 from a, you know, success and EPA number standpoint, uh, minus, you know, the running game, which I I would chalk that up to not having Sonny Michelle and Nick Chubb, (laughs) um, (laughs) which you would tend to think would be a problem. Yeah. But, you know, absent that we're still doing pretty close. Um, but that said, it is one of the weaker parts of the game. So I'd like to see that get short up as we, as we roll forward, but it's just an indication. And like, you know, if we go back to like 2017, you know, we had a pretty talented roster and we made it to the national championship and we nearly won it. We missed it by one pass. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's, I mean, any, any given Saturday, I feel like we have our, uh, as good a chance as anybody to beat literally anybody on the field. I watched Ohio State struggle against a really good team, the first good team that they've played all season. Yep. Uh, no, literally nothing about Oregon scares me um, based on what I saw. Um, Do you and, think Dan Lanning actually had 12 men on the field on purpose? Have you seen that theory? Yes, I did see that theory. That that, that goes in line with the uh, – that goes in line with the the, the, the hurt player thing. Mm. Um, yeah, and I, I know that that's something that uh, the waiting since last Saturday guys were talking about in their in their recap. I hadn't actually seen it, but I heard them talk about it, and I was like, "Oh man, that sounds like something that they definitely would would take advantage of." Yeah. Um, what surprises me, like if that's your working theory that you have you have someone come in there and game game the system by eating clock like if that's your th- working theory then the the counter to that is okay we need to make sure that on the offensive side especially if we end up playing Oregon in the national championship which is what John keeps saying over <laughs> and over again um but if we're ever in that situation i hope that someone is counting people before the snap and we spike the ball mm. Yeah, yeah, and not run any clock. 
True. Not running any clock. True. True. That's the counter. Yeah. That's the counter to the if that is a strategy that someone is going to employ, which to 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 that point, like, okay, if if it was on purpose and you truly were trying to prevent a, a big play, why stop at 12? Yeah, yeah. That's where I don't I just <laughs> I don't know that I I don't buy that it was on purpose for what it's if you really wanted to do it on purpose, you'd like throw 13 men out there, like run someone onto the field as they're snapping the ball kind of thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? There was an opposite situation in our game where we only had 10 men on the field and we ran on an 11th guy. And then like there was mass confusion and everyone was trying to send him back off and we had to call timeout. But anyway, Uh, that was frustrating. Uh, here, before I forget, let me, let me hit, uh, coaches, uh, stuff really quick. Um, I, we've kind of come, I've, I've kept chopping. Um, Mm. I am now only one pick behind you for the season. Uh, How many did you overcome? Uh, I don't know what it was last week, but I went four and four this week. It was a rough week for you. You went two and six on the on the over unders. So okay, so you, you you pulled two back. Yeah, yeah. So um, yeah. So you're twenty eight and twenty overall. I'm twenty seven, twenty one. Uh, but you had a you had a perfect week uh, in the pick 'em uh, games. You went four and zero. Oh, I went three and one. Uh, the difference being uh, you had LSU uh, coming out on top of it. As, as you predicted, John, at home, at night, LSU wins. Uh, so thanks for Coach. Uh, tracking those. Against, Great to see you. Never been against LSU at home. Yeah, at, at night. night. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so those those things, uh, I just wanted to get that. And then I guess I don't know how much we want to get into these, but one thing, uh, actually, just update, I am uh, – Kim and Lily and my parents, we've all decided that uh, we're going to make IMDb pages since we were in a Hulu show with Glenn Powell at halftime. Um, yeah, I, I heard I heard everybody talking about that. I haven't seen any videos. Like, what what happened? I sent you, did, did, it, may, it may not have gone through. I, I attempted to send a video from the stadium. I can resend it. So there was an announcement in the stadium. It was like, mm-hmm. they're filming a, a show for Hulu. A football team is going to run on the field everyone boo them. Like it's, we're all about to be uh, like okay. in a show. Now chip towers apparently missed that memo. He he's like, he tweeted like everyone's booing a fake football team. There was no announcement. No one knew what was going on. It was like, Oh my gosh, chip. They, it was like, there were multiple announcements. Also they did it multiple times. So like it all happened. Like they run out, everyone boos them. And then they're like, okay, let's do it again. Like they need to do another take. They did it three times. I believe they kept going back in the tunnel and running out and we kept booing them. And then I was like, Kirby told us to be loud. We're getting tired. Like we're booing so much at halftime. We're getting worn out. And Kirby's going to be upset. Like let us let us rest up for halftime. That, that should have, that should have been a tweet. That should have been a tweet. Oh, man. So, <laughs> so like, so that was a thing. Um, but like, I didn't realize like that it was Glenn Powell. Like they were, you know, you're when they, they did like a close up of him on the jumbotron, I guess his character was kind of like, you know, it's a tough moment or whatever. And he's kind of surveying the crowd. And so they got that shot actually on the jumbotron. I was like, Oh my gosh, like that's Glenn Powell. So then Kim's like, you know, in the state and researching it. So it's a TV <laughs> show based off of the Eli Manning skit where he dressed up, you know, as a random dude and went to walk on trial at Penn state. So he was a character, his, his, his character's name in that skit was called Chad powers. And so the show was based off of that. Glenn Powell is Chad powers in this show. That's what that is. So, so the premise, the, the, well, hold on, totally off the rails. Have you, so have you never seen the, this? The, have you seen the Eli Manning yes. skit? Okay. Where, where he dresses up as someone and goes. So and my goes, understanding is the premise out as a walk on or whatever. Yeah. So my understanding is the premise of this show is this character, Chad powers in this show played by Glenn Powell is like, he's, he's too old to play college. I don't know if it's college or not. Something happens where he like dresses up and pretends to be someone else to get a second chance at football. Okay. I guess. So I remember, I remember this, 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 this concept when it was called ladybugs. Do you remember that movie? <laughs> I, yeah. I remember lady ladybugs. RIP Jonathan Brandis. Jonathan Brandis and Rodney Dangerfield. Yeah, Rodney, it was, yeah. I mean, you know, great movie in my youth. I've no telling how many times <laughs> I've seen that movie. A quintessential nineties movie. <laughs> I mean, you know, or you got, uh, I, I, I was kind of thinking like the replacements, you know, little Keanu Reeves. Shane Falco, maybe a Shane Falco type situation. Yeah. Anyways, 
it was so random though. Like it, it was, it was like coach Hayes. He heard about it first. He heard someone say something about it. So he, he gave us the heads up that it was going to happen. And then like that. So then when they announced, it's like, Oh, this is what you're talking about. You, actually coach Hayes missed it. <laughs> he was at concessions at halftime. He missed it. Um, <laughs> it was pretty funny, but like, yeah, it was wild. And like, you know, they did announce it, but people were still confused because not everyone heard it. So, uh, it was funny. I wonder if Glenn Powell enjoyed the enjoyed the Athens scenery. Um, yeah, good question. I, I I don't, would, Miles Teller I don't was, was in town not too long ago in Athens. I saw a video of that at some point. That's weird. All the Top Gun guys. Uh, yeah, I feel like um, <laughs> I feel like Glenn Powell would enjoy himself in in Athens. Yeah, the finest establishments. Right. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> His his star power would be uh, quite powerful these days amongst the amongst the ladies, the co-eds. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I guess the, I, don't know, I don't know if he's married or not. But. I have no idea. Good question. Don't know. Um. Yeah, but then I guess the other off the rails type topic is the whole um, Kirby pushing their quarterback. What do you make of that? <laughs> I I think it may be indicative of some some of the the problems that we're having on the defensive side where our, our head coach has poor eye discipline. <laughs> I mean, that's, I mean, yeah. Kirby clearly didn't see that kid, but what I will say, if you go back and look at the replays, that kid very clearly knows that he's about to walk into Kirby's path because Kirby is making his way over mm-hmm. and his, the quarterback's eye, eye positioning should definitely see him coming because he's coming in hot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. True. True. I got it. Kirby is so dialed in on chewing Glenn Schumann's <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Carter. Uh, that uh, that he did not even see it. And like in true Kirby fashion, as soon as he as soon as someone initiates contact, boom. I still I still can't. I kind of can't. I guess I can, but also can't believe that it happened. Um, I will say. I mean, I feel like he. I feel like he is lucky that there wasn't a flag. I will say that. Like, I think like there's some stuff going on now. Okay, let me flip it around the other way. What if what if the what if the uh, the quarterback's trying to get back on the field because he's trying to set the ball? Kirby's in his way and he pushes Kirby. You tell me he doesn't get a flag? Yeah, I get it. I guarantee you he does. Like, to, uh, the fact that Kirby like Kirby's awareness was at zero is kind of wild to me. Um, I mean, imagine if the quarterback flopped. You know, like. I feel like he's lucky he didn't. I mean, he flops, he reacts. You know, I mean, maybe awareness a little low for the quarterback too. He totally should have flopped. <laughs> he would have made it more obvious. Um, Can't be pushing a player. I he I feel like he should. I'm I'm surprised it happened. I think people are are also overacting with to it, but I still feel like like what the heck? Like how do you? <laughs> how does that happen? I thought it's kind of wild. I think. Um... Was it? I feel like there was a there was a moment in this weekend, and I don't know if it was in another game or not. But one of the there it was a play where um, it was a play where someone got pushed. I think I think it was I think it was this game. Was it was it Mikel Williams that got flagged for roughing the passer? Uh, I thought it was, um, I thought it was Kristen Miller, but I could be wrong. Where like, he basically pushed, he basically pushed him, um, after, after the pass had like just thrown and it was, it was just a little push. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I don't know who it was. I do. I have not seen the replay of the roughing the passer. All I remember was asking people in the text, like, was it actually roughing the passer? Yeah. That's all I can tell you. I don't know if it was this game or not, but I remember somebody talking about it and it was just a little push. Um, oh, right no, there. that was the one in the Kentucky game. Okay. Maybe maybe I it was that. I, I, I couldn't remember which game it was, but I remember something come up this past weekend. I don't remember which game. But the oh, this weekend? Was, so you're not even sure if it was Georgia? I'm not sure if it was Georgia. Okay. Then I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure if it was Georgia, but it was it was a situation where if someone got pushed, a quarterback got pushed, and they threw a flag um, for roughing the passer. Mm-hmm. And it was just like if that's roughing the passer, like 
Yeah. Yeah. I, I wish that I, I remember some former players. I don't know if it was George. Like I'm, I'm totally fuzzy on, on where this was. Maybe I was too deep into the bourbon at that point. Um, but I, something like that came up where it's, it was something that literally happened in the field of play mm-hmm. where a pass was thrown and not too long after that, someone got pushed mm-hmm. and they threw, a, they threw a flag for roughing the passer. And it's like, what the hell? Like, what are we doing? Yeah. 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 So um, kind of like, uh, kind of like the, the previous, the previous weeks where, you know, offensive lineman or someone gets, gets flagged for like literally blocking someone on a, on an interception. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not a fan of that one. Um, yeah, I'm not a fan of any, I'm not a yeah. fan of any of that stuff. Like, yeah, dude, we, we lived, we lived in a, we lived through the, <laughs> These these kids are not prepared for the the life that we led back in the day when Aaron Murray got absolutely blasted. Yeah, seriously. Yeah, that. <laughs> that I, yeah, how was that not a penalty? Yeah, but yeah, it's, uh, a, it's a new it's a new day and age. It's yeah, a new day and age. yeah, for sure, for sure. Okay, sorry, I took us on a couple of off the rails paths. No, uh, no, no. For the record, I think I, I keep hearing people are like something should happen to Kirby or whatever. Like, no, like. I, I don't I don't get that, but whatever. Yeah, not move on. Happen. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. Move on. I don't. I don't. I, it's a it's it's a big nothing burger. You could look at it in slow mo. It's like it's like watching it's like watching the uh, a a VAR or an, an instant replay situation. It's like yeah, back into the left, <laughs> back into the left. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. come on, dude. Like yeah, for sure. I don't, I don't, I, I don't even know that, that that would have been a flag. Like if it had been a, an actual player. Yeah. Yeah. You may be right. You're probably right. You're probably right. All right. Well, uh, the game, I guess, I guess only other thing, like I said, you went four and oh, I did. I watched a ton of football Saturday night. I watched a ton of, fo- I watched we a got ton back. of football on Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> so Saturday night we had like the clicker. We're just kind of, hopping around for all the games. A um, lot of good endings. Um, basically, all those night games had... You had LSU Ole Miss went to overtime. Florida, Tennessee went to overtime. And then mm-hmm. Oregon, Ohio State, right down to the last second. Um, like, literally, <laughs> I guess, with the quarterback sliding as time expired. Uh, so those, those were all, like, fantastic finishes in relatively close amount of time. So... Uh, got to hop around and watch, and but to me, that's where, like, what you were saying earlier, and that's where I feel like I don't know that anyone is truly elite. Like, I've you know, I saw good football, but I don't know that I saw an elite team in, in what I was watching. So, I don't, I feel like this is this year is kind of is giving me like 2007 vibes. So, um, and that was a crazy year, and I feel like that year of any is probably a good argument for a an expanded playoff. Um, and, I'll, <laughs> and I'll tell you what, that year at the end of the year, that was a, that was a team where you felt like, man, if Georgia was just in a playoff, they could beat anybody, you know? So that team really peaked at the end of the season. Oh, maybe that's, maybe that's where this team's headed. We'll see. Maybe, maybe. Um, what I tell you where, where it is headed is all the people that are looking for more playoffs are, are getting really excited. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because, yeah. Basically, what you have is like, I mean, Jim, we may need to dust off the uh, the tiebreaker scenarios here. Um, oh yeah, because at this point, like you know, Georgia Georgia beats Georgia beats Texas. Everybody's got a loss. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. The, it's and, and none of us have, not many of us have common opponents. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, at the top anyway. It's going to be yeah, year one of this you know new SEC championship format with the divisions. There's gonna, I feel like there's gonna be a tiebreaker somewhere. Jim, Jim, if 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 for some reason like Texas were to like get into something because of their performance versus Mississippi State versus ours, <laughs> and it and it comes down to that last touchdown, I'm gonna be so pissed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know, and that's the kind of thing, yeah, that's I, technically I guess it's possible because yeah, it's is isn't that like one of the one of the scenarios is like common opponents. I believe so. I believe so. And it yeah. can get into like, it's pretty far down, but it can get into like scoring margin against common opponents. I believe. Exactly. From what I remember. Exactly. Yeah. But remember the very last thing is a coin flip. 
<laughs> it could be worse. It could be. Could get to a coin flip. <laughs> uh, yeah. It was it was it was fun. Um I know that we didn't have it on our game list, uh, but selfishly I was following it and tracking it. I say selfishly, but I was I was tracking it because I have a friend that's a, a big K-State fan in the neighborhood. Mm-hmm. Um and I knew that I was gonna run into him on Sunday. But uh also it was like literally the last football game that was on was K State versus Colorado. Okay. Did you watch any of that game? I did not. No. Buddy. Like if you ever wanted to watch like the Deion Sanders like train derail, that was the that was the game to watch because I think Shiloh Sanders had like or um Shadir Sanders had like three or four intentional groundings. Mm. It was uh it was it was not pretty. And uh, I think Travis Hunter got hurt. Like I don't know. You basically got to see like what they look like without Travis Hunter and their number two wide receiver. Yeah. Um it was it was not pretty. Hmm. Yeah, no, I admit I I went to bed I think after Oregon, Ohio State ended. I think that was the last one I or no, whatever it was later. At Ole Miss L S U, maybe that ended after that. Um, Ole Miss L S U was a yeah. pretty late one. Yeah, I think when that ended is when I went to bed. So you know, Lade Kiffin. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Although we do have to figure out who the Brian Kelly uh doppelganger is that was next to Brian Kelly on the sideline. I'm assuming it's his brother. I'm assuming it's his brother too. We'll have to figure that out. We'll gotta put glasses on. <laughs> I really don't care because we don't play them. True. <laughs> True. FTMF, June. Yeah. FTMF. Yeah. Don't they play is... them? Huh? No LSU. No. And then, yeah. No South Carolina. No Vandy. Yeah. We, we avoid. We avoid the the juggernaut that is Vandy right now. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I, they should be ranked. I don't know why they're not ranked. But dude, speaking ranked. of ranks, speaking of ranks, Navy and Army are ranked. Like what is happening? You know, there's a scenario where they could like sneak into the playoff. Well, there's okay. No, it's it's like they play each other. So okay, they're the Army Navy game, like the traditional game, is uh-huh. is after the playoff is announced. Like it's like an exhibition, basically. So what could happen? Oh. But they're also in the same conference. So there's this scenario. So let's say they both go undefeated, right? <laughs> so let's say let's say they go undefeated. They play in their conference championship. I'm just going to pick a team. I'll go. Or I'm going to go alphabetical. So let's say Army wins the first matchup, right? So now Army mm-hmm. is totally undefeated. They're conference champions, and if they're the fifth highest ranked conference champion, that means they get into the playoff, right? So then they are that they get the 12 seed in theory. But then before the playoff, they're going to play Navy. They get they would play Navy again in the Army Navy game. And then what if Navy wins that game? The playoff has already been set. Can't change it. It's wild. So for some, I feel like for you, as someone who loves chaos, I think that you really need to pull for that. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I love chaos. Um, I feel like that, that would be totally un-American for some, some, some crap like that to happen. I can't, I can't believe that that's how they, how it's I, scheduled. I, I can't believe that's how it works. Yeah. How, how is that even possible? I don't know. I don't know. It shouldn't be. It's not only that, but like, you know, just like basically. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. I mean, it sounds like they've killed this plan. It assuming kills, it kills, it kills one of the greatest rivalries in, in, in America. Like it yeah. kills one of the greatest rivalries. Yeah. That's like, why I don't like, like period, this period. End of story. Like yeah. the, the playoff expansion sucks. If the army <laughs> Navy game means nothing. Take that Josh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Josh. <laughs> Uh, so yeah. All right. Watch, watch this space. We may dunk on Josh again. I know. I know. Seriously. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, I, I think I, th- I, you know, the, cons- the, the, the consistency is the inconsistency. Um, but you know what? It was a conference win. I, I like what you said. We, uh, we won a game and we, and we move on. Yep. We've got, we've got some big fish coming up. And um, let's uh, let's get ready to fry them. Um, yeah, I think we're gonna. Yeah. Um, maybe we say we're gonna. Maybe we say we get ready to grill them. I'll take it. Yeah, I'm. I'm. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna be grilling this weekend for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, seriously. I don't know about you. 
Um, yeah, man, this was this was fun. Uh, once again, another another weekend that I'm I'm sad to have missed out on. I'm glad that you guys were able to make it down. Um, but yeah, it was it, it, it looked like it was a good time, and um, looking forward to this weekend. So, go dogs, go dogs.